My name is Wanda Korn, and I'm the guest curator of George O'Keeffe Living Modern. Uh, I had a former life as a university professor and teacher, uh, and in retirement, I returned to my first love, which was to uh, research and design exhibitions and accompanying books about, it, about uh, shows that I thought would be dynamite uh, in, in our present day museums. George O'Keeffe was a painter, uh, an artist who uh, lived in the turn of the 19th into the 20th century. She grew up in uh, Virginia. That was her sort of second home. She was born out in dairy country in Wisconsin uh, and uh, had some training, art training in New York and spent some time in Texas, which is when she fell in love with the great American West. Uh, and then eventually ended up in New York when she was um, uh, about 30 years old and decided that having been a teacher for 10 or years or so, she was going to try to make it uh, as an independent artist and have a career uh, making art. And she did that in New York where she uh, married Alfred Stieglitz and he helped her uh, craft, if you will, her career and because he had a gallery. Uh, and he showed her work on a regular basis. Um, and she became, or it was the beginning of what she became to be, which is a very famous American modern artist. I began to study George O'Keeffe oh, way back in the 70s. I was writing a book called The Great American Thing, which is actually a quote from George O'Keeffe. Uh, she once said about uh, her circle of artists, when is the great American thing ever gonna be painted? when uh, artists keep fleeing to Europe to do their work. And she did not flee to Europe. She was uh, American born and bred and never traveled abroad until much, much later in, in, in her life. And I began to study her uh, in this book, which is about her circle of modern artists in, the, in New York and Paris. Uh, they're American artists. My field is the history of American art. And um, when I began to realize that I could devote a whole chapter to her paintings uh, in New Mexico. At the time, many scholars were just concentrating on what she had painted in New York and not at all about another part of her career, a very long part of her career, which was uh, in northern New Mexico. I ventured out to um, Abiquiu, where she lived, and I was lucky enough to have a chance to sit down with her uh, in the fall of 1980 and have an hour-long interview with her and see her home, a uh, home I've spent a lot of time in subsequently. I realized right then and there when I saw her house that there was an aesthetic in her house, a minimalism and a, and a beautiful um, understatement uh, and modern furniture that made me realize then that there was uh, a, a, an aesthetic that she carried in her art that was also present in the way she had put her homes together. And really what I've done in this exhibition is just to extend that to the arena of clothing and fashion. And the way she puts her body together uh, is very similar to what she does, both in the studio in her art and uh, in her homes in her interior designs. What's special about this exhibition is that we, in fact, have a wardrobe to work with. And not only do we have a wardrobe, but it's such an interesting one that once I was able to look at the clothes she left behind in her closets, and she had two homes in New Mexico, and when she died in 1986, both homes had closets that were filled with clothes. And for some reason or other, she had saved clothes. Now, many women do that anyway, but I think I can say with some certainty that a lot of the clothes she saved that were the older garments, not garments she hadn't worn for decades, were because she had made them herself, that they were her labors uh, that were represented. So in going through the wardrobe, it became clear to me that when she was making her own works, uh, making her own clothes, which she needed to do when she didn't have any money to hire anyone else to do it, and she was very fussy from the very beginning about how she looked, um, she had a certain aesthetic from, from childhood on that was what we might call a minimalist aesthetic, a kind of simplifying of one's wardrobe, uh, uh, nothing, nothing extra, uh, just the thing itself was the way she dressed, 
um, plain, we would say. She was a plain dresser, but an attractive plain dresser. In any case, she so needed to um, curate how she looked, even in her early days, that sewing was one of the ways she could do that, because she could make her own clothes to her own designs, not ever being a creature who liked buying off the rack. So once she had a fine career going, then she was able to hire other people to sew for her, but she would often select the material and she would often design the clothes or help design the clothes uh, with the tailor or the seamstress that she, that she worked with. So this exhibition focuses on that aspect of her, I would call it art making. It's another form of art. And to make that point, we have uh, created an interdisciplinary exhibition where clothes, paintings, and photographs of her in her wardrobe, especially her black and white wardrobe, which is what she privileged whenever she got ready to model for a photographer, all of those are brought together in this exhibition. It's very interdisciplinary, but we don't make a hierarchy. We don't say that the paintings are more important than the clothes or the clothes more important than the paintings. We try to give equal speak, if you will, to make the big underlying point, which is that she had a um, all-consuming aesthetic that she applied to everything she did, whether it was putting together the way her kitchen looked, uh, the way her uh, mantelpiece was, was organized, um, or the way she dressed and what she did in the studio. She was a brilliant modernist who applied this single aesthetic to every area of her uh, life. I learned so much about Miss O'Keefe. Uh, I had known quite a bit about her as an artist, and I knew a great deal about the way her um, art had developed and the various journeys that she had gone uh, on uh, in her painting. But I had never thought too much about her discipline as an artist and her discipline as a woman who, I suppose today we might say she was something of a control freak. Um, but I would say that she was invested in Living Modern, the name of my exhibition. Uh, and Living Modern for her meant that what, when she pulled herself together, um, when she pulled her homes together, it had to be of a piece. There's a good German word that is used sometimes when all parts of one's life or of a particular art form come together. It's called a Gesamtkunstwerk, a total work of art. And I think in a way, she wanted her life to be a total work of art. And that's what we're trying to underline in this exhibition. It's not something that many of us can pull off. Um, and it's also something I didn't really understand about her before I got going on this project. The clothes helped me to see how hard she worked in areas of her life other than what she did in the studio. And that brought a whole set of revelations and understandings about this remarkable woman, that she was a woman who designed a life uh, as well as designed uh, and a corpus of wonderful works of art. I don't know what one would mean if they said, I want to be George, <laughs> I have to say. I think, I think what makes her appealing to today's younger generation and she has, I know because of this exhibition, found a soft spot in younger viewers. And I think it's because, in a way, she uh, was so considered in everything she did that had a public aspect to it. You know, today, social media gives us a public arena that young people are working with and on all the time. Now, Miss O'Keefe did not have that kind of thing, but she had her photographers. And she knew those photo photographers were gonna send their works out into the world. So in a way, she was designing her look and designing her um, presence, uh, her persona, we would call it today. And a persona is not a whole person. A persona is a piece of a person. It's, it's a, a mask, really. It's a, a particular distillation of a person. But it's not the person that has a bad hair day, or, and it's not the person who you know, washes dishes at night. It's, it's somebody more regal and more um, larger than life, 
if you will. And I think if somebody wants to be Georgia O'Keeffe, it's in a way they want to have that holistic um, body, that, that whole, holistic person uh, that is uh, attractive, even when she gets dressed in the morning, not just because she's an artist. I mean, she, she knew exactly what worked for her and what didn't work. And most of us fall for all kinds of get-ups and dresses and pieces of clothing that then we say, why did I ever talk myself into this? Well, she does not have many of those moments. She does have a few things in her wardrobe that I found that I think, what, she wore ruffles? Don't think of Georgia O'Keeffe as a ruffle person. Or did she ever wear big buttons? Well, very rarely. She liked little, tiny, small buttons. But I think what you learn from that is discipline. And you have to decide if you want that kind of discipline to control your life or not. It's not for everyone. I mean, she does, she's affected me in the way I pack now for travel. <laughs> because she was known to go out as a woman who reports that she gets off an airplane and she has nothing in her hands except a shopping bag. She's wearing one of her wrap dresses. She's wearing a black wrap dress. And in that shopping bag are two more wrap dresses of different colors. And she's going to spend a week out in Los Angeles where she's gone. That's all she came with. I'm sure there was a toothbrush in there somewhere. But there was no piece of luggage. There was nothing checked. And uh, she wore essentially the same functional but lovely robe-like dress the whole time she was there. It turned out she wasn't there that long because JFK was killed while she was there. And that just broke the whole schedule open. And, and Miss O'Keefe went back home to... to to New Mexico. But uh, she can give us all lessons on how to pack <laughs> for any kind of long trip or even short trip. And of course, she, she could get away with always just packing black and white. It would always work for her. And that does simplify life. She does, that's one of the things I think people do admire is that she has a, a, a um, uh, she doesn't let a lot of things, she's unflappable. And she doesn't let a lot of things bother her because then she'd never get anything done, she would say, if she had to worry about, for instance, if she had to worry about getting dressed so that each day was different in the week, she would say that that would just waste time and I would never get to the studio. She was very efficient like that. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you.